Welcome to The Life of Hair. My name is James Atkinson. Thank you for joining me in this week's episode. Now, this week's episode it is another episode where we're going to deep diaper, deep diaper, dive deeper, dive deeper, deep diver. <laughs> we are going to dive deeper. Another YouTuber's video, we're going to take a deeper dive into what we see. I really, really enjoy making these and judging by the comments, lots of you guys enjoy watching them. Thank you very much for all your wonderful, wonderful comments. They are massively appreciated, truly, truly are. There are so many of them these days. It's very difficult to respond to each and every one of you, but I will try and get back to some of the more pertinent ones. And don't forget, if you enjoyed this episode, hit that thumbs up button. So if you are new to the channel, then don't forget to subscribe. The subscribers in this channel have built a wonderful community. I do Wednesday night lives. We've got some fantastic people who join in week in, week out to take advantage of those. We've got some wonderful special guests coming to those Wednesday night lives as well. So don't forget to hit that subscribe and notification bell to be notified of when those lives will be popping up. But if you've got a good memory, it's 9 p.m. GMT every Wednesday night. Don't forget also, if you want to support the channel further, you can become a Patreon where I do fortnightly lives over on Patreon where we discuss things in more detail, topics and um, specific techniques and we really break them down into small chunks and everything that we did previously is still over on Patreon for you guys to enjoy. So that is linked down in the description. And without further ado, we're going to get on with today's episode. We're going to watch Ella Bangs do her own hair which is a very, very tricky thing indeed and something that obviously couldn't imagine taking on colouring my own hair. Just, I don't even think I could hold my hands above my head long enough to be able to colour my own hair. So let's crack on with the video. So what I'm going to be doing on my hair today is a mix of foil balayage and the technique I'm going to be using is teasing thicker sections of hair, placing them in foil to get maximum brightness. And then in addition to that, I'm going to be adding some foils with just classic highlights. I'm also going to be doing a root tap and an all over toner and I'm going to be showing you formulas for all of it. So if you're as excited as I am, let's get into the video. So for my lightener formula, I'm going to be using one ounce of Redken's Flash Lift with bonder inside and one ounce of 30 volume. So the way I do my own hair is I like to visualize where I want the lightness and just artistically place it where I think it will look good. I typically start in the front and around the face just so that those pieces get more lightning time, which means brighter results. Just the same way as the sun would lighten your hair, you wanna mimic that to create a bright yet soft look. And of course, using high quality products is the only way you can achieve high levels of lift. So for me, it's really, really interesting the way that she's taken this on because obviously she's starting bang on her parting. Now, um, anybody that's a hairdresser out there that's watching this will understand that starting bang on the parting like that is generally something we probably wouldn't necessarily do. Um, I haven't watched this video all the way through. I am watching it now as you are watching it. I just saw the beginning of this video the other day and I thought it'd be interesting just to watch it as it comes up, just so that I can be kind of um, as surprised as you are. I saw the introduction, so I saw what she did to her hair. As I mentioned in the intro, she's done a wonderful job of it, but I didn't see how she's gone about it. And so really kind of taken back by how she's gone straight in at the parting. As she mentioned in the intro there, that she was kind of doing a full update of her look. Keeping the integrity of the hair in mind, and therefore giving you beautiful, healthy, shiny hair results. I'm also using Fremar foils. It's always what I use in the salon and super easy and a very kind of flexible foil, which makes it really easy to work on yourself. So interestingly, the foils around the front hairline, she hasn't teased them like the ones she has behind. And obviously we saw right at the beginning of this video, she has quite a large money piece in the front hairline there. So I don't know whether that's to amplify the money piece, but there's quite a strong diagonal and she's leaving quite a strong, heavy line. Now she's painting up towards her root area the closer she gets to her head just to prevent any uh, strong demarcation. But interesting that she's not teasing those ones around the hairline. She doesn't really say why. So the ones there that she's just painted bang on her hairline, she is teasing, which is really, really interesting. Um, not entirely sure why she's teased those ones that are bang on her hairline and the ones that were close to her face, she's not teasing. It'd be good to get some explanation. Hopefully she'll tell us in a minute. 
Okay, so she seemed to have moved into a more classic highlighting technique. Um, there's no voiceover to this part of it at all. It's the, 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 the sections were obviously slices and teased to start with. The front ones weren't the slices and they weren't teased, but they were painted diagonally and painted back up towards the root area. And now she's come in with some highlight sections. I mean, absolute amazing dexterity. 10 out of 10, by the way, Ella, if you're watching this. Uh, fantastic. Uh, ability to you know pick out your own hair there and, and weave it. I often get asked when I do my own hair how I tackle the back and honestly it's all about bringing everything forward but of course working in the back in an area that you can't see there is lots of room for air so one of the things I like to do is really tease the roots just to maximize the softness at the root when applying that lightener and I'm definitely going in pretty heavy-handed this round because like I said I was getting pretty Interesting what she said there about pulling everything forward. So over direction always creates softness. Remember that over direction always creates softness. So by dragging everything from the back to the front, that will automatically help soften. She's used very, very heavy stitches or weaves there and tees them down towards the root area. Obviously that's gonna create diffusion. Uh, really, really interesting stuff. I actually have a video where I over direct every section to the front hairline to create um, kind of a money piece, face framing, highlighting technique. Uh, and obviously, not that Ella's copied me at all, not in, not in any way, shape or form. She's perfectly capable of coming up with her own techniques to use. But in this specific instance, she's obviously, uh, you know, utilizing her, you know, great grounding and understanding in hair to um, emphasize the softness by using every direction. So very, very clever stuff indeed. and we are ready for the toner. So we're gonna be starting with the Root Tap Toner. And the formula I used for that is half ounce of O7N Shade ZQ, half an ounce of O9NA, plus one ounce of processing solution. And I'm just gonna be applying that to the roots. I feel like this is the magic wand to create softness. It seems like such a subtle step, but it just gives that element of softness to the hair. And another reason why- I So she's gonna do the 7N on the roots, I'm presuming. She wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't 100% clear on which one she was using where, but I'm gonna definitely guess that the darker one's gonna go on the root area. Uh, and then she's gonna use 9NA uh, on the ends there. You could see though, you know, even with her amazing dexterity, she created some heavy bleed marks in her hair. I'm sure they will go to a degree, but I know from my experience with Shades EQ, when you've got heavy bleeding in the hair like that, that uh, because of the translucent nature of Shades EQ, there will be some demarcation visible unless you're dropping it down substantially. I think if we looked into her hair, maybe we'll see it at the end. I don't know if I spot it, I will talk about it. But Shade ZQ is a wonderful product, but if you're covering up um, any kind of bleed marks, I don't think Shade ZQ has quite got the density uh, in terms of the color finish um, that you would require to cover up bleed demarcation like that. That is obviously Shades EQ's big selling point as a product and being a massive, massive fan of Shades EQ myself, I totally understand the wonderful benefits of Shades EQ, but covering up really strong bleed marks like that, that's probably not its forte. I love to finish every color session with the Shades EQ gloss toners it is not only for the tonal benefits that you get, Redken's Shades EQ toners are scientifically formulated to finish the hair after it's been processed and lightened for maximum hair health. Oh, okay, so the root color was 07N plus 09NA, which is going to probably create somewhere near an 8. And then she's gone in with 9NA and 10N through the ends here to create the uh, end toner. What I would say is 9NA is quite a strong ash tone and you want to be very careful that you don't end up putting it onto any hair that's yellow so if you're going to use 9NA on your own hair um, if you're going to use 9NA as a toner and your hair's slightly yellow it can look a bit murky um, she's mixing it with 10N which will kind of help a little bit but just really want to be aware that 9NA 
can create that mixture of blue and yellow, which kind of gives you that murky, dingy blonde that's kind of a bit greenish. So if you want to avoid that, you can always add a bit of 9G, or you can use the new Redkin Shades EQ uh, VG Shades, which will automatically guarantee you don't get that result. Just a little heads up. Now I like to focus this toner on the remainder of the hair that was lightened. So I apply it to those areas and then just maybe a minute or two before I'm ready to shampoo my hair, I kind of just massage it through the ends just to get an overall seamless look. So I let this process for about 10 to 15 minutes and we are ready to shampoo condition and be done. All right guys, and here is the finished result. So just gently blow dried my hair as you should be very careful after you've lightened your hair. Then I just added some soft beach waves. And to finish it all off, I'm gonna be using Redken's A Triple Pure 32. I absolutely love this packaging as I've shared in my favorites video. But more than that, Redken's High Hold Hairspray has been a favorite of mine for years. But now that they've reformulated to a more natural scent, I absolutely love the formula and the scent as well. So just finish with Love it. Looks great. I mean, we saw it right at the beginning there, didn't we? Um, she was showcasing her new hairdo. And to be fair, you know, she'd done it herself. And I couldn't see that demarcation, even though it was just slightly below her parting. I was having a close look. It's covered pretty well. Um, I'd love a closer look inside her hair to see if you could see it with the professional eye. And I've got to say, the, sh the uh, hairspray that she's talking about is an absolute cracker if you've never used it. Um, I will be showcasing that over on my new channel, The Life of Hair Review. So do go and check that out. I haven't done that review yet, but there are a couple of other product reviews over there but definitely subscribe to that channel because there's loads of reviews coming. All hair products, uh, lighteners, bleaches, colour removers, you name it, I'm going to use it to review it. Look after yourself, guys. Thanks for joining me in this episode. I'll see you again for another episode of The Life of Hair very, very soon.